This is the Argument Ninja Podcast, episode 30. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the show. I'm your host, Kevin Delaplante. And on this episode, I'm excited to talk about the new video course that I just launched that is available now on the Critical Thinker Academy site and on Udemy. And I'm excited to say that this is the first podcast I've done in a long time that is also a video podcast as well as an audio podcast. So some of you are listening to this on audio, but there's also a video version which is available on YouTube. And I'd like to talk about this format change too. Now, before I go any further, I want to mention that my next episode is going to be an Ask Me Anything episode. I'll try to pack in as many answers to listener questions as I can under an hour. And that too will be a video episode as well as an audio episode. I've got a link in the show description that will take you to a form that you can use to type in a question. It's at kevindelaplante.com forward slash AMA. The questions can be anything, personal, professional, philosophical, it's up to you. I'll answer questions that I think I have something to say about. Okay, let's talk about the video course that I just launched. It's about science, and it's titled The Vocabulary of Science, First Steps to Science Literacy. It's got over 40 lectures in it, and it totals about three and a half hours of video viewing time. So the first thing I want to do is play for you the promo video that I did for the course. Udemy requires a promo video, and they have data on the kinds of videos that convert well on their platform uh, that maximize the chance that a viewer will register for the course. So for this video, I basically follow the Udemy guidelines for length and for content. Okay, here goes. Welcome to this course on the vocabulary of science. My goal in this course is to give you an opportunity to deepen your understanding of science and to learn to communicate more effectively about science by mastering the language we use to talk about science. My name is Kevin DeLaplante and I'll be your instructor. I spent 20 years as an academic philosopher of science, where I taught many different kinds of courses on the history and philosophy of science. I've also lectured nationally and internationally on the topic of science literacy. But I left my academic job in 2015 to devote myself full time to developing learning resources like this one that help people to think more critically and independently for themselves. I designed this course for anyone who wants to better understand how science works and how to communicate and engage constructively in debates about science. By the end of the course, I promise you'll know more than 99% of the population about how scientists and non-scientists use terms like theory, fact, law, hypothesis, and model. And you'll be able to identify the most common arguments about science that rely on specific uses of these terms, and the most common misunderstandings that people have about how scientists actually use these terms. The course is broken into the following sections, with a section devoted to each of these five key terms in the vocabulary of science. And in the final section, you'll have an opportunity to test your understanding by offering a critical review of a seven minute video on the vocabulary of science that touches on many of the themes that we'll talk about in the course. The ideal student for this course is a science educator or a science enthusiast who is passionate about science and wants to improve their understanding of the nature of science and their ability to engage productively in debates about science. There are no requirements except an interest in learning. The course doesn't presuppose any special background in science or the philosophy of science. So feel free to look through the course description and the preview videos to learn more. And I look forward to seeing you inside. That's not bad, right? I kind of like that. If you're listening, you just heard the audio, but there are graphics in the video that I'm kind of proud of. The, the spinny globe, the scrolling text, the B footage. I kind of like doing all that. But I confess it's a little cringy for me to watch this because it's so obviously a piece of sales marketing, and I have to overcome my own aversion to self-promotion. So making videos like this is a kind of exposure therapy for me. The more I do it, the less awkward it feels over time. Now, before I forget, I do have a hugely discounted sign-up link for the Udemy version of the course in the video description below and in the podcast show description. But I'm also hosting the course at the Critical Thinker Academy site, at criticalthinkeracademy.com so you can purchase access to the course there or you can sign up as a recurring supporter on Patreon or at the Critical Thinker Academy site and get access to this course 
and all the other courses I have there, which now adds up to close to 24 hours of video content. You can find links to all of that in the video description and in the podcast show notes. Anyway, let me tell you a little bit about the background of this course that you won't hear anywhere else. I don't think I talk about this in the course at all. When I was working at Iowa State University teaching philosophy of science, I spent some time with people in the science education program who work on science literacy and on the training of science teachers about how to teach not just the facts of science, but about the nature of science and about scientific reasoning. Now, most science teachers don't have any background in the history and philosophy of science or any special training in strategies for teaching about the nature of science. So this all seemed quite important to me. I helped a good friend of mine at Iowa State, Professor Michael Clough, run some seminars on the philosophy of science for graduate students in his science education program. And from that experience, I thought, this is great, but it's not going to help the tens of thousands of science teachers who are not in this seminar right now. So I thought, this is another one of those many times where a set of online video tutorials would be really helpful that anyone could access. So I added that to my long list of ideas for video courses that I wanted to work on. Then I left Iowa State in 2015, and in the fall of 2015, I found myself teaching the philosophy of science course at Carleton University as a one-time gig filling in for the regular instructor. So in coming up for a theme for the course, I decided to focus on science literacy and the vocabulary of science. I don't know how many of you who follow me remember this, but over the course of the next six to eight months, I made about 12 videos and I published a number of episodes of a podcast on critical thinking about science. Those videos are still up on my YouTube channel and they're available at the Critical Thinker Academy website, but the podcast is not on iTunes anymore. You might remember one of the videos was called, Should We Expect Our Politicians to Be Science Literate? Another one was called, why most people, even people with advanced science degrees, are scientifically illiterate. And then the plan was to start working my way through a curriculum that focused on what it means to be able to think critically about science. So I produced five videos on the nature and goals of critical thinking. That was sort of a preliminary unit to set up what was to come. And then I produced five videos that introduced the five unit curriculum that I had designed for teaching genuine science literacy. Here's the list of those units. Number one was the vocabulary of science. Number two was the logic of science. Number three, the methods of science. Number four, the landscape of science. And number five was the ethics of science. So each of these videos was intended as an introduction to the content that would comprise the full unit. And I anticipated that each unit would be a full video course with at least several hours worth of video in each course. And I was totally jazzed on the idea of this project. I thought it would be genuinely useful. I didn't think there was anyone else who could produce it the way that I could, in the format that I could. And it would be like my Cosmos project, a set of courses about science that all together told a story about what science is and what it means to think critically about it. And that was the last thing I produced for this project until now. Because at that point, the writing was on the wall, my money was running out, and I knew that I couldn't afford to keep making this stuff and putting it out there for free. So I had to reconsider what I was doing. And that was when I made it turn toward the argument ninja concept and to focusing on the relationship between argumentation, and critical thinking, and the psychology of belief and persuasion, and toward reconceiving of critical thinking as a kind of martial art and of critical thinking education on the model of skilled performance training. So I started the Argument Ninja podcast that following summer in 2016, and I began thinking and talking about a virtual critical thinking studio built around the model of a martial arts studio. And that became the focus of the Argument Ninja podcast and what I later called the Argument Ninja Academy, which was to be the fulfillment of this virtual training studio. However, if you've been following me for a while, you know that that project has also stalled to a certain extent. And the reason for that, though, is no mystery. Building the Argument Ninja Academy was always going to require resources that I couldn't manage all by myself. I've used this analogy before, but it's like the difference between writing a novel 
and making the movie based on the novel. A single person can write the novel, but a single person can't make the movie based on the novel. That's got to be a team effort. So ultimately, all of this comes down to money and resources. Earlier this year, I did a, a business review, and I came to realize that my most consistent source of income over the past few years has been Udemy, where I've got some video courses that Udemy has been able to successfully market to students within their marketplace. So I knew that I could grow that income source just by adding new courses there and taking advantage of the student base that I already have there. And I also came to realize that the most effective way to grow my Patreon support right now is by adding new material consistently to the Critical Thinker Academy, because just doing one podcast a month isn't going to cut it. It's just not enough content. So this is what brought me back around to creating new video courses. And it did help once I accepted that these courses don't have to be the Argument Ninja Academy. These can be worthwhile projects on their own that I know that I can produce on my own and that I can complete just by devoting regular time to them, one or two hours a day consistently. And that brings us back to this new course on the vocabulary of science, which is the first course in that five unit sequence of courses that I had sketched out almost three years ago. Now, why did I pick this topic rather than some other topic to get back into the course production mode? Well, partly it was because I knew I had a story to tell about this course. It had a beginning, a middle, and an end, and I knew that I would enjoy the hours that I would spend working on it. And partly it's because in the spring, I got asked by Carleton University to teach that philosophy of science course again earlier in the summer. So I was already going to be spending six or seven weeks immersed in this material. So it just made sense to take advantage of that. And I also realized while I was teaching this summer that I had the perfect student assignment that I could build into the course. Now, there are lots of articles and blog posts on the vocabulary of science, and there are some popular videos that talk about this too. I played one of these videos in class, and it's from the It's Okay to Be Smart YouTube channel. And I realized this is a perfect case study for doing a critique that uses the concepts we talked about in the course. And I'll play a short clip for you to give you a sense of it. If we're going to trust science together, the least we can do is speak the same language. Words like Fact, theory, hypothesis, and law mean something totally different to a scientist than the way they're used in everyday speech. So let's get them straight. Facts are really just observations about the world around us. And we observe things every day, like that it's bright outside when I look out the window. And we often develop explanations for those observations, like, okay, the sun is probably up. Congrats, we just developed a hypothesis. This is perfect. The host gives his definitions of all the key terms and talks about how they relate to one another. It's a perfect case study for critical analysis. So when I produced the video course this summer, I included this as a student exercise and I included my own detailed analysis of the video. It all just kind of worked as a self-contained topic and a learning exercise. And I'm really happy with how the course turned out. Now, another reason I was excited to make the course is that I wanted to produce the videos in the style that you're seeing right now with my face on camera up in the corner of the screen. So you can still see slides or video content while I'm talking. So just for the benefit of the people who are listening to this on audio, the video that people are watching right now has webcam footage of my talking head on top of some visual content. Now, I've known for a long time that this had to be the way to go moving forward. This is a way of connecting with an audience that you can't get with just audio alone or just with audio on top of a slide. And if your goal is teaching, it's a way of sustaining engagement and connecting different sensory modalities. So it's just a better way of doing that. And for me, it's a way of getting out of my comfort zone, showing my face on camera, talking to a camera. I do have a certain amount of anxiety about that. I think everyone who starts doing this has to overcome at least some feelings of self-consciousness, of not liking how they look on camera, not liking how they sound, and I'm no different. But having made 30 or 40 videos in this format, it has gotten easier, and it got me thinking that I might produce the podcast in this format too. So here it is, the first episode of the Argument Ninja podcast, 
in both audio and video format. I want to thank you for watching and listening. If you want to stay updated, please subscribe to the Argument Ninja podcast wherever you listen to podcasts. And please hit the subscribe button below if you're watching on YouTube. Remember, next episode is an Ask Me Anything episode. So please send your questions to kevindelaplante.com forward slash AMA. I do have a link in the podcast description and the video description. Once again, that's kevindelaplante.com forward slash AMA. And I invite you to check out my new course over at the Critical Theory Academy or on Udemy. By the way, I do have Patreon supporters who prefer the video experience on the Udemy platform. So that's an option too. If you're a monthly Patreon supporter, just ask me and I'll send you a free registration link for the Udemy course. So that's it for now. It's a bit of a shorter episode this week. Thank you for listening and for watching. And let me know what you think of the new format. And I'll talk to you soon.